Uh, we're back with part two um, of our software defined uh, network video series. Uh, we're basically talking about some of you know what software defined networking is, uh, what are some of the use cases, what are the business drivers behind the technology, and then as it gets later in the series here, we're going to start talking about maybe how we apply some of these technologies, um, what technologies are available right now in this space, and who's and who's offering them. So today we're going to talk about some of the business drivers behind software defined networking, right? Uh, we did an overview um, on, on the first video uh, where we talked about kind of what software defined networking is and what it kind of looks like from an overall technology perspective. And now we're going to talk about why it's here. What made this come into existence? What drove the industry to develop this software defined network framework? You know, there's a lot of diverse drivers out there, right? It's common concepts, um, diverse drivers, and then multiple execution paths. And software defined networking is creating that framework to allow people to solve uncommon problems with a common platform. It's as simple as that. And I guess the overlying statement that people should always keep in mind uh, with software-defined networking is that you're not doing anything really new. You're not you're not doing things that you weren't able to do traditionally in a network. You're just you're enabling yourself to do them more efficiently, and you're giving the control to perform those things that you've been traditionally able to do as a network administrator to things that aren't a human. Right? You're giving applications or you're giving other pieces of software the control and the tie-ins necessary to make configuration and, 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 and changes across the network uh, more efficiently. It's not revolutionizing the way people design or build or implement networks. It's really just giving the control and giving the ability to make changes across that network to things that are something besides a network administrator. You, know, you see lots of things come from customers. You see lots of things come in from uh, industry analysts that are drivers behind software-defined networking, and those things are, I want to create an expansive layer two network without the traditional confines of, of VLANs. Um, I want to be able to orchestrate applications across my networks without depending on dynamic routing. I want to engineer WAN environments that don't depend on ISP specific MPLS technology. I want to create a unique way for, for virtual mo machine mobility across my campus and data center networks, right? Those are things that we've all, that, that I've heard from customers and that I've seen from um, people in the industry that are kind of talking about where SDN is going to find its place in life. Let's look at an, an example of, of application-aware networks and network-aware applications, right? They exist today. There's hundreds of enterprise applications out there that are very much network-aware, meaning they know the latency that they're experiencing to get to their users, vice versa from their users to get back to them, and they know the quality that they're delivering. Um, and based on that, they can send out alerts saying, hey, there's a quality issue in the network or in the path that I'm taking right now to get to my users. And so there's also application-aware networks. You can classify applications across the network right now and, and, and set alerts and thresholds based on what you want the performance of that traffic to look like. But what completes that picture of a network-aware application and an application-aware network? Right now, it's a network administrator manually making changes on the network to facilitate the things that those two different mechanisms are alerting them about. Right? You can only do that so fast. Whenever you have human intervention, you know, it inertly creates um, a, you know, a, a delay between when the problem is, is noticed and when the problem is resolved. So one of the use cases for software-defined networking is to give control to the application that's already network aware to be able to make changes on the network to facilitate the experience or the performance that it needs to adjust in order to deliver a successful user experience to its clients or its users. So if you have an application that knows the latency from itself to a user and you give that application the ability to know that whole path from, from end to end, knowing every device along the way and giving it a tie-in to be able to adjust both routes, quality of service policies, access lists across that environment, you then give that application to make very, very quick and very precise decisions about things that it can change along that path that can change that user experience. If you had an administrator sitting in front of every single device along that path the whole way in, in, in the traditional model looking at application performance and alerts and looking at queues and performance data, you could manually make these types of quality service and route changes on every single device across the path of communication. But you would need an administrator dedicated to every single device and most likely dedicated to every user going through that path of communication. It's just not realistic. If you give the application tie-ins to every device along that path and dedicate a process that watches every user connection to that application, then all of a sudden that becomes a reality. You can change quality of service policies very quickly. You can change routes to go around um, high latency um, you know, pieces of infrastructure. Um, and you can do things that, again, you, you've always been able to do that. 
doing that in such a way that you could do it on the fly and do it reliably and do it um, as the user moves through an environment or you know through a, an application that happens to maybe live between a cloud and you know private cloud, public cloud. There's lots of moving pieces there. So doing that programmatically is the most efficient way to do it. And SDN gives you the platform to be able to do that. Now, of course, I, mean, I know network administrators out there are shuddering, say, I don't want applica- I don't want programmers in my network. I don't want a programmer through any API and any of my switches or my routers. And you know, don't worry, it's, it's a valid concern. You can control what they can access, you can control what things they can change, and to what degree they can change them. So it's very, very controllable, both from the application and the network side, just as it enables application-aware networking and network-aware applications to be able to control and interact with each other, you're able to interact with that underlying system in the exact same fashion and be able to control rights and privileges and so on, like you've always been able to do traditionally with user access roles across the network. And that's a very good use case, I think, for software-defined networking. Just one small example. Um, we'll talk about some more as, the, as this series progresses. And uh, of course, we're gonna, then going to talk about some of the specific technologies that are involved to create that ecosystem, what offerings exist from different manufacturers to enable that, um, and what some of these deployment models look like um, and how we, in, in how we use them in the real world and deploy them, and then some examples of those things happening.